Greetings, coaches. You're listening to the All Access Coaching Podcast powered by the Glazer Drive. My name is Rick Stewart, and I created All Access Coaching with the vision of coaches helping coaches, which is why I partner with the folks at Glazer, because we share the same vision. Everything that All Access Coaching and Glazer does is focused on one thing, making you a better coach. This is hosted by allaccesscoaching.com. This podcast is being brought to you by Team Nation, a digital playbook that your players can instantly access on their phone in a video game type of learning experience. Build your playbook online or pull it from the library. View how often your players looked at the playbook, or should I say played it, because they feel like they're playing a Madden video game while learning your playbook. Check it out at TeamNationSports.com. Today's podcast, we're really excited to have Coach Nate Moore, who's the head coach at Maslin, Ohio, a uh, school with a uh, steep, steep tradition. He was hired there in uh, 2015. He's widely recognized as one of the most respected coaches in high school football. In five years as a head coach prior to coming to Maslin, Coach Moore had compiled a 42-21 and record and a 10-3 and playoff record while taking over two struggling football programs, Minster and LaSalle, uh, down in Cincinnati area. They so South plays in what's widely regarded as two of the toughest conferences in the entire state of Ohio. Prior to Moore's arrival at Maslin, LaSalle had never won a playoff. Oh, I'm sorry. Prior to Moore's arrival at LaSalle, LaSalle had never won a playoff game and had shared the GQ, is that the GCL, the GCL yeah. South title just twice in, in 53 years of school's existence. But in 2014, Coach Moore led LaSalle Lancers to the Division II Ohio State Championship, finishing with a 14-1 record and a GCL South Co-Championship. At Maslin, he's had some success also. They were the state finalists in 2018, 19, and 20 with a 14-1 and 10-2 and records. They went 10-2 and during the COVID season. And this past year, they lost in the regional finals with an 11-3 and record. Coach, really excited to have you on. Uh, talking a little bit ball, we're going to talk about the uh, three four four two fusion defense. But, Coach, before we get started, uh, you coach at a very unique place. Most coaches in America uh, don't experience the support and the just the intense football environment that uh, that you get a coach in. Uh, there's a show about the Maslin's history on Netflix called Go Tigers. And, um, Coach, I really enjoy the sideliners program and. and and, and you basically have two different booster clubs kind of supporting you to do. Maybe kind of fill the, 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 the coaches that uh, around the country into uh, how unique of a situation you're in. Yeah, well, first of all, thanks for having me on. Really appreciate the opportunity to get on here and talk some ball with everybody. Um, Maslin is a, a very unique place. Um, you know, it's, a, it's an honor, first of all, to, to be the head coach here, to follow in, in the footsteps of guys like, Paul Brown and Chuck Mather and, and Earl Bruce and Bob Cummings and um, Lee Owens, who's the head coach at Ashland University right now. Um, so it's an honor to, to try to carry on and add to the tradition that, that is Maslin High School and the, and the, and the Maslin Tigers. Um, but it's a, it's a big operation here in town, as it is at, at some other places. But, you know, like you talked about our, our booster club situation, um, you know, we have we have really three different organizations uh, that are active booster clubs uh, just for the football team. Um, we have we have the Maslin Tiger Football Booster Club, which is the main one. And there, there's booster club meetings on uh, Monday nights during the season and, and then, you know, monthly you know, uh, out of the season. And they take care of a, a lot of our needs um, as a program. But we also have the Touchdown Club. And the Touchdown Club was organized uh, back in the 50s for uh, really the business owners downtown um, that, that, that uh, uh, maybe had to be in their business in the evenings during the booster club meetings. Um, and, and a lunch meeting worked out a lot better for them for keeping up on what was going on with, with the Tigers. And so that meeting is, is Tuesday. Um, it's a lunch meeting. We have lunch and, and then we have uh, um you know, period where, where we, we bring some kids and some captains to talk about last week and, and, and to preview the next week's opponent. Um, and then we also have the sideliners and, and the sideliners program, like you mentioned, is, is a really unique, really cool program. Um, that program was started by Lee Trestle, um, also back in the 50s. 
And and what what it does, it, it was really started because they were having trouble with some of the, the 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 players that lived a little further out getting rides home from practice, and there were some guys that that, that maybe couldn't play football because they didn't have a ride. Um, and and so the sideline of program was created to make sure that um, every varsity player that, that that needed a ride or, or help in in in, in any way um, had access to that, and it and it turned into. Uh, really a support system that, that takes care of our Thursday meals. So um, we get done with our Thursday practice and, and our meetings and um, every kid has a sideliner, um, sorry, every junior and senior or sophomore if they're a starter has a sideliner. The sideliner picks them up, takes them to the team meal. We eat together, kids sit with their sideliners and, uh, and afterwards a lot of them go out for ice cream, things like that. Then the sideliner typically takes them home. Um, and, and it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's an adult mentor for a lot of these guys. You know, some of our guys uh, come from split families or, or don't have a dad who's active in, in their life. And um, so it can be a, 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 um, a great resource uh, uh, for, to support for our kids. Coach, I watched the Go Tigers on, on the Netflix. And do you still have to go to the hospital every time a newborn baby, every time a boy is born in your district, the head coach shows up at the hospital and puts a football in the crib? Uh, no, not exactly. So, so the, that, that program is run by the booster club. Um, and it's actually the booster club members that, that, that take care of that. Um, I do sign the footballs. So, so when a, when a boy is, is born in Maslin, uh, I, I brought a football, sign it, uh, go Tigers, coach Moore. Um, and then the booster club takes that, that ball and delivers it to the hospital for the kid. Wow. That's, that's, that's a crazy story. When I saw me and my son watching Netflix and we're like, Holy moly. That's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. You yeah, know, they take cool. it, they take it serious. I, oh, I yeah. mean, I know there's a lot of really great programs, cuts crunchy, but when you think of tradition, you think of Maslin, you know, up where you're at. And then, and then of course, Valdosta down in Georgia, those are the two that, you know, uh, you know, the, uh, Friday night lights made a uh, Odessa kind of famous, but really when you look at the hundred year history, they don't have the tradition of, like you said, uh, Paul Brown started the, 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 you know, Cleveland Brown Cincinnati Bengals and he was the head coach. I've been in mass and coaches. I was really excited. I, um, I went out there one summer and I heard they were doing a seven on seven. I showed up unannounced. They've got this beautiful stadium. When you walk up the stadium, the tradition just snacks you in the face. There's a statue of Paul Brown. There's all these uh, national titles back then. They it had national titles, not just state titles. And there's all these banners hanging and, and uh, the, your indoor practice facility also was quite impressive And the Cleveland Browns. If I heard the story right, the Cleveland Browns built your indoor practice facility because the Cleveland Browns used to practice there. And of course they don't now, but then you inherited this beautiful indoor practice facility. Is that, and, and, and then the stadium with all the banners and stuff, it's just something else. Yeah. So our, our indoor facility was actually built by the, the David family, uh, Paul and Carol, David, uh, uh, great benefactors, for our program and, and, and their son built that indoor facility in, in their honor um, about 12 years ago. Um, and it's, uh, I mean, it's, it's a phenomenal facility. Um, you know, we, we never have to cancel anything because of, you know, snow or rain or, or, or any, or, or lightning. We, we, we've never, we've never done a varsity game in there. We have, we have finished some scrimmages in there. You know, when you have lightning there early in the, in the summer, we have finished some scrimmages in there. Um, we have done some uh, youth football uh, tournament type of things in there in conjunction with, with the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Um, but it, it, it's an unbelievable facility. And, uh, you know, in, 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 in Ohio, you're, you, you look at the Cleveland Browns, and they have a 60-yard indoor facility, and, and the Bengals don't have an indoor facility. Um, so, you know, for us to have an indoor facility that, that's 12 years old and have access to that is, is pretty outstanding. Now, coaches, it's apples and apples. You can coach somebody, well, yeah, uh, coaches playing for all these state titles because look at the resources. But, but coach, your schedule isn't um, – uh, your, your schedule is still quite tough. Ohio football is pretty serious. I mean, you've got, some, you've got some dudes on your schedule too, right? So it's not like it's all uh, just peaches and, and honey and you're just rolling through people with all these resources. So Ohio football is right up there with Georgia and Texas. Well, yeah, I mean, I appreciate that. I mean, we, we've, we've played some national games. Um, um, we try to build an, an aggressive schedule. And there's some, some great teams in Ohio that, that we get a chance to play, too. We played uh, St. Ignatius uh, last year. We played St. Edwards uh, this year and last year. We, we played uh, 
uh, we're the, the all time winning team uh, in Ohio and we got a chance to play New Jersey's uh, winning as team uh, Montclair um, a couple years ago and, and played East St. Louis um, out of Illinois a couple years ago. A um, couple PA teams recently. Um, so it's, it's uh, uh, you know, like I said, we, we try to build a great schedule. Um, and, and look, you know, everybody's going to use the resources that they have. We've got some great resources um, and we try to be uh, the best in the state of Ohio developing the kids that we have as well. And, and uh, our coaching staff does a great job of that. We, we you know, work really hard at it and, and it's a, it's a, it's a constant focus of our off season. Um, our, you know, if you check out the Go Tigers film on Netflix, you know, one of the stars of the show, Danny Studer, uh, whose, whose father is a strength coach in that film, uh, Danny is our strength coach currently. So he's carrying on, on his dad's legacy, um, does a phenomenal job with our guys. And, and um, that's, you know, that, that's the bread and butter with, with every, in, in, in any great program. You know, we're going to talk some defensive scheme, I know, and um, you know, that's great. And, and uh, you know, I hope everybody gets on and checks out the Glazer drive with the, the three, four, four, two fusion defense. Uh, but if, if you don't have it going on in the weight room, if, if you don't have somebody in there, whether that's you or, or a straight coach or, a, or an important assistant coach um, that's putting your kids in really, really tough scenarios and, and making sure that they're ready to have handle the grind of a, of a tough season. Um, you know, you, you can't out scheme that. So. That's first and foremost. So, so Coach Studer, what he does is, is so important for us. Um, like I said, I was really honored. Um, you're right down the road from the NFL Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio. Um, it wasn't a far drive for me, so I was really excited. I got to. You weren't the head coach yet, but I, I was. I got to go on campus. Lucky for me, there was a seven on seven going on that I didn't know about. So I got to sit in the stands with some of the old timers and watch the seven on seven tournament, and then. That the head coach before you was nice enough to take me into the indoor facility. And, and then I stayed the night and then went over to the hall of fame the next day. Um, if a coach wants to just kind of show up and see the whole tradition and what you're doing and then double it up with a trip to the hall of fame, um, you know, do they just get a hold of you? Do you, do you have some stuff that you would recommend like month of June, month of July? Yeah. So but my contact information um, is, is, is in, in the drive. You can definitely contact me through that. Um, my email is nmore1 at masslandschools.org. Um, so you, you can definitely shoot me an email. Um, it, it, we actually, that happens quite a bit. Um, you know, even without the, this plug, appreciate that. But, you know, it actually happens quite a bit that, that we'll have coaches swing by. Sometimes, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll get a message from somebody that, that they're coming through and can they stop by? And yet, you know, sure, of course, you know, we, we'd love to show you around. And sometimes they, they just pop in. You know, sometimes we're, you know, walking, you know, back and forth, uh, you know, back and forth from, you know, a summer workout, something like that. And there's some guys out there taking pictures and, you know, striking a conversation. And, yeah, you know, come on, we'll show you the indoor facility. Yeah, because uh, what is it, five or ten minute drive over to the Hall of Fame? I'm trying to remember. I didn't drive very far. Yeah, it's eight miles. Eight miles yeah. of Ken. Um, and the Hall of Fame's outstanding. The Pro Football Hall of Fame, you, you can spend all day there. Um it's uh, it's it, it, everybody should make that trip. There's, there's no, no doubt about that. And, and, and a lot, this is what a lot of people do, you know, just, just like what, what, what you did, what you said is, is they make that trip. And then, you know, there's some things referencing Maslin in there. Maslin was really important in the formation of pro football. Um, and so people think, you know, well, you know, why don't we swing by Maslin, check out Paul Brown Tiger stadium and get a feel for the history. And you're right. It is, it is special. And, um, I, anybody that's that's been to Chicago and been to Wrigley Field to see a Cubs game, um, very similar. Uh, the feeling that you get walking into the Wrigley Field for the first time, you, you can really feel the history, you know, coming out of the, the, the bricks in that stadium and the, and the vines on the wall. You can just feel it. And, you know, that's the kind of feeling you get when you, when you walk in front of Paul Brown Tiger Stadium for the first time. You can really feel the history. And it, it's, it's one of those things where, um, you, you know, what, what you think it looks like, what you think it's going to feel like that, like, that's what it is. Like it feels right. Um, and you know, it's a 17,000 seat stadium and um, you know, it's, I, I just saw something on max preps recently. I think it's the 10th biggest high school stadium uh, in the country. Uh, technically ninth. Cause they listed the pro football hall of fame stadium over in Canada. And that's a, that's a, that's a pro stadium. 
It's not, there, there's a high school that plays there that we're not going to talk about, uh, but that's not a high school stadium. It's a pro stadium. Uh, so really we're the ninth biggest. Yeah. The, the school we're not talking about is, is their big rival there. It's a, it's a, gosh, it might be, there might be more people that go to that game than the state championship game. That's, that's a, I've oh, heard easily. the stories of that rival. Easily. Yeah. Easily. Yeah. 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 Hey, we'll, we'll fill up for that game. <laughs> yeah. Hey coach, that was awesome about the whole tradition of, of Maslin and stuff. Um, but Hey, these, our listeners talked tuned in. They want to hear some defense coach. Let's start with what's your overall defensive philosophy and, and why do you call it the fusion defense? Uh, yeah, I appreciate you for asking that, that question. Um, so when I was first a head coach, my first head coaching job, um, small school, a lot of guys can probably relate to this. Um, didn't have an opportunity to bring in a lot of coaches and, and I had some guys that were, that were great community guys, but, but, but weren't hugely strong uh, guys where I, I felt like I could, I could really give them a side of the ball. And, and, and I was an offensive line coach. Um, so it, it, it might be more natural for me to, to dig in more to the offense, but, but I thought maybe I could keep a hand in the offense from a little bit more distance um, but, but if I'm not coaching the, the defense or, or coordinating the, the defense um, and the scoreboard starts to light up on it, you can be out of a lot of ball games pretty quick. Um, so, so that was important. So that, that was really my first experience really coaching defense at all was, was coordinating it, uh, uh, my first head coaching job. And originally I was a 4-3 guy, and, and there are some things I really liked about that, but, but there's also some weaknesses. Um, and it was when I got to Maslin, and uh, and had a chance to, to bring in uh, Craig McConnell um, as our defensive coordinator, um, and, and and take what he was doing at Jackson High School previously uh, with with the, the fusing together the three four defense and the four two defense um, was was something I was really excited about, um, and then brought on Spencer Lino a couple of years later and, and made him a co coordinator, and he's a tremendous young coach. Um, was an All-American in Wittenberg. And um, what we've been able to, to, to do defensively um, has, has, been, has been pretty outstanding with uh, being able to match up uh, schematically with the, the varied styles of offenses that, that you're going to see at the high school level. Um, you know, you may have to defend an, an empty team one week and a wing T offense the, the next week. So, um, we feel like the, the, the fusing together the 3-4 and the, and the 4-2 two, two defense give us a great chance to be able to, to defend um, really anything that you're going get, to get thrown at in, in high school football. And generally, um, everything we do is game plan oriented. Um, and so we're not, you know, 50% 3-4, 50% 4-2 or you know, one year we're going to, we really want to run more of this and I know you re really want to run more of that. It, it really depends on, on the offense and, you know, in general, the more receivers they have on the field, the more three, four, we're going to be. And the more running backs they have on the field, the more four down we're going to be. And, and, uh, and we kind of work things out through that, but um, you know, the, 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 the combination of the, the three, four, and the four, two, and I think how we do that's pretty special. Cool. Cool. And, Obviously, we can't cover your whole defense in one podcast. You guys got to head over to the Glacier Drive. Coach goes really in depth with many, many courses. There's probably, I don't know, Coach, what do you think? Probably 12 or 20 hours they filmed you talking about the system. Um, but, Coach, let's really focus on the importance of run fits. I think, I think a lot of young DCs, they get on the Internet, and they're like a blind dog in a butcher shop, and they pull up all these blitzes. And they want to do this. And they want to do that. And, and, and they, they forget whatever your call is you know, how you run fit and, 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 and making sure every gap's accounted for is very important. So I'd really like to really focus on the importance of the run fits and, and how you teach that and, and how the run fits change from a three, four, when you got three, three down linemen versus four down linemen. Yeah, a hundred percent. You're spot on. Um, every, everything, everything we do is geared towards stopping the run. That's, that's primary for us. Um, and, and so, and so, yeah, I'd love to go over some run fits and let, let's, let's pull those up. So, so we're going to talk through our even run fits. You have to start with, with our, 
inside linebacker reads. So our inside linebackers read the guards. Uh, we do underkey the backs for flow, uh, but but the, the primary number one read is is keying the guards. Um, the, the first read is an open window, pretty simple, right? So you're keying the guard, the guard engages with the defensive lineman, you get an open window read in your gap, you're, you're taking that window, right? We, we want our, our linebackers playing downhill, playing a, a, a aggressive. Um, so that's the same read for the mic and the will. The, the, the gap is, is different. One guy has the A gap, one guy has the B gap. Um, but the first and primary read is open window fill. Um, and, and, you know, maybe, maybe a, a side comment. I, I don't know how many guys have problems with this, but, um, you know, as you're working through your personnel, you know, especially the young guys that, that are coming in, your, your new softwares that are coming in and whatnot. And, um, you know, there may be a kid that, that your freshman staff really loved at linebacker because he looks, he, he looks like a classic Mike linebacker, but, um, when, when he gets up with you and, and maybe he's getting a little, little better instruction on, on run fits and reads, you know, he just, he, he's, uh, he won't, he, uh, he won't play downhill. He gets that open window read and he still wants to pitter patter around. He's not taking that thing downhill. Well, in my opinion, that's not a linebacker. It's just not. And, and I, I think, I think, um, I think saying, well, you know, l let's coach the kid up on that. I think that's one of those things that if, if they don't bite when a puppy, they're not going to bite when they're a dog. Um, so if a kid, if a kid gets an open window read and he's not screaming downhill to take that window, he's probably a defensive end. If he looks like a Mike linebacker, just my opinion. Um, but that, that's, that's primary read right there is your guard engages in a run block on the down lineman. Your gap is open. You take that open window. Um, one of the open window reads that we'll get and, and, you know, the primary open window read that, that, that we see and probably everybody sees is, is inside zone, right? So that's open window, boom. That's how we defend zone, right? We're, we're downhill to the defend zone. Uh, you also get an open window read on ISO and it's a little different, right? So if you get an open window read on ISO and both guys are downhill taking those open windows, then you've actually got a problem because the, the offense is creating an extra gap with the fullback. Um, so our base way to defend ISO, and this is different. This is one of the, the things that I get the question, questions on the most, probably out of the drive, um, is, is our, our ISO run fit. And so we're going to take on, well, well, first of all, let me back up and say this, is, is we always ISO alert, right? So if, if we have an offensive player, a fullback tight end in position for ISO, and, and you know, we work on that during the week in, in, the, in the game plan and everything like that. But we're always going to ISO alerts, right? So if, if, if the mic gets a, gets a sniffer fullback in the B gap right here, right, he's, he's going to alert ISO, ISO, ISO to the will just to get him thinking like, look, right, this is, this is an ISO team or this is a team that runs ISO, right? I got a fullback here in the B gap, good chance it's ISO. So I'm going to just let that guy know. So, um, so we're thinking about it, right? And so now I get an open window read on the mic. And so here I come, I'm downhill, just like I, 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 I've been coached up. Open window, here I come, right? Fullback inserts into that open window, we spill the fullback, right? So we're gonna take that fullback on with our outside shoulder. Um, probably the, 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 the base way that most people play it is, is to play that fullback with our inside shoulder. We're gonna play with our outside shoulder. We're gonna spill the fullback. On our way downhill, we get, it, we get our open window read, right? We've already ISO alert. We're thinking ISO. I'm the Mike linebacker. I'm hoping they run ISO, right? Right. I confirm ISO with a fullback, and I'm yelling ISO, ISO, ISO to the will on the way down. Maybe I just get one of those out. Right? So I'm yelling ISO as I come down, right? That tells the will you're probably going to have an open window read. Now you're not going to take the open window. Now you're going to scrape to my outside pocket, Right. So that's going to get the wheel over the top of that, of that piece block uh, on the nose back to the wheel. He's going to get over top of that. And he's going to play to my outside pocket. So we're going to try to spill the ball to the wheel, actually. And we probably have a free hitter there on the outside in, in, in the sand. Um, so that's our ISO run fit. Coach, does will... your, yeah, go ahead. Coach, does your mic get confused about 
when do I take things on my inside shoulder? When do I take things on my outside shoulder? He just knows on the ISO he's going to take it on with his inside shoulder. Correct. Well, we, we, and, and we are a spill defense. Um, so, so we spill everything with our defensive line. Uh, there are some times that, that, that we box some things. Um, we always have an edge to our defense, and that guy's going to box. Box is, is the term that we use. We will box ISO sometimes in certain situations. Um, that, that's kind of a game plan thing. But but day one install with ISO, we, we, we are spilling. That's how we take. If, if you ask one of our kids, a linebacker, how do you take on ISO? He doesn't say spill, and then, then he's going to go play defensive end. So to make it clear to the coaches listening on a podcast, they can't see your slide. So coaches, um, both inside linebackers have a have an open window, um, but since the ISO is going towards the mic backer's open window, the wheel backer is not filling his assigned gap, which is the A gap, even though he sees an open window in his assigned gap. Because it's an ISO, the wheel knows, hey, don't fill your gap since the play's going on the other side of the center. Cross over and go help the mic in his open window. And so um, if I'm seeing this right, Coach, basically on the ISO, you want both inside linebackers in the same open window. And one inside linebacker takes on the lead blocker, whether it's an H-back sniffer or a fullback in an I, I situation. And then the other backer who's coming over to help him in his open window is, is crossing over the top. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Correct. And, and so, you know, what the offense has done is by inserting the fullback, they've created an extra gap essentially. Right. And so, so with the fullback on the ice, so um, the Mike can't just fill that open, open window. Right. So he has to fill inside or outside the fullback. Um if, if you fit him outside the fullback, here, here's, here's what, what we found is when the wheels, because you got to get the wheel over there somehow anyways, most likely, um, unless you're just going to spill it to the same. And, and that could be good some of the times, but it could be really bad some other times. Um, but but if, you're, if you're taking the, the, the fullback on with your inside shoulder and just putting everything back to the wheel, um, it's a much easier angle for that ace block working your nose back to the will linebacker to work off to the will, right? Because he's got to come downhill and scrape real tight off of that nose, right? To get to that near side of the B gap, let's say, right? Whereas if our mic spills it, so now our mic takes on that fullback with his outside shoulder, right? The will, he can take a deeper path across that ace block, make a much tougher angle for that guard that's trying to work off of him. It'd, it'd be nearly impossible for the center to, to work off on him at that point. Uh, but a really tough angle for the guard to work off him because he's now he's not working towards that inside of the B gap next to the guard. He's working to the outside of the B gap, right? And so and, and if our Mike does a really good job and he comes downhill and collision, and there's a little bit of a mess right there. That's going to make that guard's job a little, a little bit tougher there to come off. And so we feel we feel like it's a tougher block um, on the ace on the ace back to the will. It's a tougher block for the offense. Um, and let's face it, what's the offense want to do here? I mean, the offense wants to kick the fullback out, right? That's what they they would prefer to happen. So generally, you know, we want to do the opposite of what the offense would, would like to happen. And so we're going to spill the fullback, make his job tough. Uh, that the, the angle for the will now is tough on that ace block. And, uh, and, and that's how we found that how, how we, that's how we prefer to defend ISO. Awesome. Awesome. And, 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 so, and, and, and it's, so that, so that we gate the, the weak a gap um, so that that'll be the backside safety. He'll, he'll be the cutback player in that weak side. A gap. Yep. Yep. So those are your ISO reads. Are there more? Oh yeah. Yeah. We got more. Oh, there we go. All right. Yeah. So, so, we've now moved on to what do you do if there's a closed window, right? So, so th this would most likely be some type of a, a, like an outside zone play. That, that's, that's a, that's a, a big closed window play for us. Um, so, so the, the, I, I guess the, the, the very first part of the read is, is so I get a run read from my guard, right? So that's really the first initial part of the read. So, so first I get a run read from my guard. Right, hats down. He's coming forward. It's run. 
right? I'm starting to, I'm starting to press and work downhill, right? And, but it's a closed window. So he hasn't, if I'm the will here and I've got the A gap, the guard is not blocked out on the three technique, right? And, and the center has not blocked out on the nose to create an open window on the A gap, right? One, one or both of those players is, 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 or actually both of those players are working in the same direction now, right? So the A gap's closed. There's, a, there's somebody's bodies in that A gap, right? So I'm gonna continue to press, right? Press the line of scrimmage, and and now it's important that I under key the back, right? So run read good. Here I come. I'm I'm downhill. I'm pressing closed window. Okay, so the window's closed. Now I got to under key the back. Find the bag near the path of the back, right? Is really how that that works on a closed window, right? So the picture we have up here is is, a, is an outside zone lead play, right? And so both of our and it, it would depend on how they blocked it. How they're blocking it here is, is really a full zone, full reach scheme, right? And so, so here we we both got closed windows. We're, we're both going to mirror the mirror the back, our, our under key, and we're both working. The term we use is cloudy to clear, right? So as I'm working inside out on the back, if something opens up, right? If something clears, then I'm going to take it, right? If I think I've got a I've got an open path to the black to the back as I'm working. You, you cloudy to clear the front side, then I'm going to take it. If it continues to be cloudy, then I'm just going to keep working, right? So that's the general idea there is close window, mirror the path of the back, work cloudy to clear. If, if, if you've got a shot, take it. You're a linebacker, right? That's what you're paid to do. Um, if it's cloudy, then you keep working inside out on the back. Got it? Yep. Good. Okay. Uh, the other big one here is, is our pull read, okay? So, right, so really any, any gap scheme or, 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 or trap situation, um, you know, so, so how do you fit that? Once again, kind of like ISO, the offense is creating a, an extra gap with, with the puller. So we have to match that, right? So a lot of people run, you know, some, some type of a long trap. A lot of people insert the fullback with that. You know, some, some people will run like the, the old counter trade GT scheme, right? With, with the, it's a guard kick out and the tackle pulling, you know, there's all kinds of versions of that or just straight power with the fullback kicking out guard pulling and wrapping doesn't matter. It all fits the same for us. So, uh, so initially, right. And, and it, it does kind of depend on what they're doing on the front side of the gap scheme. It could be cloudy or clear. There, there's there's some teams that we've seen where they, they they true gap it down. They don't double team and, and and everybody's just if there's not a guy in your inside gap, you're you're running through the to the backside linebacker, right? So it could be a closed window read uh, for the play side linebacker. Most of the time, you're getting a double team, and so let, let's talk about the will here. So he's he's got the a gap, right? It's his gap. He's got the three technique in front of him, right? Most likely what you're going to get in a gap scheme to his side is a center blocks back on, on the nose and you're going to get a deuce block on the three technique back to the mic, right? Or the backside linebacker. And so initially he's going to get run first, right? So he runs. So here, here I come, I'm downhill. I'm pressing open window, right? The, the guard, the guards working that double team on the three technique the centers blocking the back, the a gaps open. All right, so your base read is an open window read. That says get downhill right now and you take that open window, all right? But what we want to do is get an extra guy to the front side, all right? So how we do that is on the back side, the mic is, is reading the guard here, and the guard's going to pull to the front side, right? So when the guard pulls to the front side, the mic's going to yell, pull, pull, right? And so as soon as he yells, pull, pull, the mic, or I'm sorry, the, the will, he's probably pressing up a little bit, right? He's starting to attack that open window. But as soon as he hears pull, pull, he's now jumping outside and, and getting outside of that, that Jack linebacker, right? And now our mic, he's got the pull he, uh, uh, from his guard. He's screaming pull, pull to the will. And then he's working front side A gap cloudy to clear just like it in a in a in a closed window read right so as he works to the front side 
if that a gap remains open, let's say, let's say our three technique has done an unbelievable job and, and, and the deuce block has been able to move him out of there and the guard can't really come off. Well, he may have an open window. Our Mike's going to take that open window, run through and, and go for the tackle for loss. Right. If they've done a good job on the three technique and that guard's coming off, right. That, that it's going to be cloudy, relatively cloudy. He'll keep working over the top of that. Right. So, um, that's how that's how we get an extra guy to the play side of the of, of the gap scheme. It, it, Coach, the, the yeah. linebacker that's in front of the puller in in the in the case you're drawing, this is right. the backside linebacker. His guard's pulling behind the center. What if it was guard trapped and they're trapping that three tech? Um, and now the Mike backer, the 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 play side guard, instead of doubling the three, he's escaping right now to the Mike. Um, are those kind of different scenarios for the Mike about? When do I have to attack the A gap if it's guard trap when my guard pulls? And when can I scrape farther when the guard traps, when the guard pulls on a counter play that's getting out to the B or C gap? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, I, we would say true to our rules. Eh? We, we would work play side A gap, Clyde, to clear. Uh, what should happen there on the front side with our three technique is, is we're a spill defense. So our three technique, if, if he does his job right, he's going to spill that, that trap lock, right? And – Usually, uh, you know, a team, if a team run, runs trap or not, you know, sometimes, you know, people don't, don't show and they, and they bring it out. I, that, you know, I guess that could happen. It doesn't really happen. Usually trap teams like, like, you know, they're going into there if they run the a gap trap. And so, you, you know, you definitely want to practice that because your, your ends will get a lot more work in general as spillers than your, than your inside guys. Um, so, so you want to make sure you expose those guys to that and work that, but our tackle, right. If he's, if the guard blocks down on the mic, if he veers down on the mic, right, we should be hands on that guard. And that's going to take us right to a, to a spill. We, we want to take that on with our outside shoulder and spill that guard. So the ball should be in the a gap, but the ball shows in the a gap on an a gap trap. That's on the D tackle. No. Mm -hmm. So does it really matter when the guard very releases on that mic? Um, the the non-pulling guard very releases on the mic. Mike's trying to get over to the A-gap because his guard pulls. Yes, yes, does it yes, matter yes. which shoulder I take that guard on with? So so I would try to climb over, over the top of that guard, right? So as I'm working client and clear, that guard is down on me. I'm going to take him on with my hands, and I'm going to scrape over the top of that, right, because he's – He's blocking down on me to protect the ball going out there, or at least in theory. I mean, I know we're talking about a gap trap here, but if our tackle does his job right, that's is where the ball's going. If it goes anywhere, right, that's where the ball's going, right. So they're trying to run a gap trap. We spill the guard. There is no a gap. The ball's got to bounce. Which if, if you're trying to run trap and it's and it's bouncing, that's probably not a good scenario. And then you know what are they doing with the end? Right? Are they jumping the tackle through for the play side linebacker? Probably, right? So the end's unblocked unless they're inserting somebody else, right? So it would bounce, bounce the end, you know, plus, you know, both of our linebackers are, are fitting there for that bounce. So that should be not a great play. Coach, could I summarize this? Guard yeah. trap, A-gap guard trap, the burden's on the D lineman to stop it. The counter play that's going a little farther, the burden's on the linebackers to stop it. Um, I mean, somewhat, I, I think, I think with what you're saying, an A gap trap is, is definitely well defined that if it shows in the, in the A gap, that's on the D tackle. Right. But so let's say, let's say, a, a, a B gap power, right. Let's move one gap out or, or the, or the, the guard kick out fullback wrap play, which is essentially the, the same thing. Right. If our Jack linebacker right here. If he gets kicked out and he doesn't spill, right, then that's going to be a good play for the offense, and, and that's on him, right? So, so like, you know, I don't like it. All fits together, right? So, um, the, the if if the if the tackle can't hold in on the, on the deuce block, it's possible that the the jack spills. Maybe it's not a great spill, but technically it's a spill. And the ball still shows there in the A B gap, right? Where 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 it shouldn't. So that that Jack has to do a great job of spilling, but our three technique has to hold in there in the B gap. He cannot get driven out. He cannot get driven out of the B gap. He's, he's got to hold the point there. Um, so like 
everything has to fit has to fit together. I think that's really the unique thing about defense is is you know with with offense there can be kind of a, a one man show and you know I'll be honest you know you know like the I've said this before like the NFL films stuff that we all loved watching growing up it's still like you know you go to the Pro Football Hall of Fame you're gonna you're gonna see some of that you're gonna go sit down and watch a video and here's Dick Butkus right he's got you know sweat snot you know falling out from underneath his face mask. <laughs> They're talking about him being the ultimate sideline to sideline tackling brute. And there's not a running back that ever showed up, you know, on the field that he didn't run down and tackle. And it's this over romanticized idea of what linebacker play is. And, 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 it, and it's just not true. Like the idea of, of one guy standing behind the defense and, you know, I, I guess you could, you know, crash everybody in, Right. And, and spill everything and, and, and let this guy run everything down from the inside out. And, and that may be good some of the time. But if like like if that's really your thing, like you're not going to be very good on defense. You may have one guy with a lot of tackles. But that's not the same thing as being a good defensive football team. So right. Right. It, it really is 11 guys doing their job. And, 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 and you know, when you're talking about stopping the run, you know, it's, it's usually, you know, your, your front seven and your two safeties or one of your safeties. Right. That's an alley. That's an alley defender. Like all those guys, they all have to do their job. And one guy doesn't do you could have you could have nine of those guys doing their job at, at a high, high level. And if one guy doesn't, it's six points in the band's playing. Yep. yep. Uh, and, and that, that's, that's a big part of what our focus is defensively. And, and as we you know, took over this program, honestly, like that was one of the hardest things to get corrected. And sometimes, you know, it, it, it takes, it takes a year or two, right. And sometimes you got to work some of that stuff out of your program. Um, but uh, you know, th this idea of 11 guys doing their job all the time, like that's what defense has to be. Awesome. Awesome. So we got, we got uh, an ISO clear and cloudy. You got pool reads. What, what, what else you got to teach these guys? So, so um, I mean, we could go over over the the the, uh, the outside linebackers. The bulk of it, you know, you know, really when you talk about run fits, is the inside linebacker reads, um, and and maybe we should flip over to the odd front stuff and show those inside linebacker reads and, and how they how they marry up, which I think is really one of the really beautiful parts um, about our defense. Um, it, is is how we we marry together the uh, the run fits for the two inside linebackers because. If your inside linebackers aren't 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 entirely confident with what they're doing in the run game, then they're not going to play fast. If they're not going to play fast, they're not going to be any good. And if your inside linebackers aren't good, you're not going to be good run on, in run defense, which means you're not going to be good as a football team, right? So there's a whole lot of bad stuff there. Um, so so they, in order to do what we do, the 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 reason between those guys have to have to marry up, All right? So um, when we when we are in our odd structures, our two inside linebackers are still reading guards. That does not change. Okay, that that does not change. Um, and we still under key the near backs, right? So our, our primary number one key is our guard, but we still under key the, the, the near backs. We still have our primary run read as an open window read. That does not change. Okay. Um, like I said, when we we're talking even fronts, the, the first part of that read, the front edge of that read is, is run, right? Is a run or pass, right? So if I get a run, I get low hat, right? I get, I get, I get a, a charge out, right? I, I should be working my way downhill right now. Really, even if it's passed, we should be working our way to, down now, downhill right now and confirm, right? But certainly if it's, if it's, if it's low hat, here we come, right? And if I get an open window, I am taking that open window, right? So here um, we have the, uh, the the Wills guard blocking out in a double team with a tackle on our defensive tackle, who's in a four technique. We have the backside guard that, that the mic is, is, is over. He's working front side, or, or well, we really don't know front side or backside here, but he's working with the center in a double team on the nose, right? And so the Mike has an open window read in the B gap. The Will has an open read, open window read in the A gap, right? 
Um, and so we are going to take those open windows. That, that's first and primary. All right, we're going to fit ISO the exact same, right? ISO fit doesn't change, right? So you can see here, right? So our Mike linebacker, he gets an open window read. The tackle's blocking out on the end or try to peel the end out, out from the B gap. The guard's blocking down with the center on the nose, trying to work an A's combination back to the will, right? And we're probably getting an open window read with the tack working out to the jack and the guard working out to the tackle here on the back side. Although it's possible that we get a closed window read here also, right? Which, which really would be a little bit easier for the will, right? But so let's assume that the harder read is, is, the, is the open window read for the will. So initially he's working downhill Right, the mic's got the fullback to his side. He's gonna ISO alert the will, right? So they're already thinking ISO. He gets an open window read. Here he comes downhill, hard and fast, ready to fill, right? Confirms the, the fullback is, is fitting ISO. He's yelling ISO on his way down and he's gonna take on the ISO with his outside shoulder. He's gonna spill ISO, right? Or, or will, he, he's working downhill initially uh, uh, to fill his open window. He, he gets that, uh, that ISO call from the mic, which he was expecting, right? Because he was ISO alerted. And now he's going to work to the opposite pocket of the mic linebacker, right? To where that ball is, is hopefully being spilled, right? So our, our run fits on zone, right? Or your, your base open window play, exact same, right? Your run fits uh, on ISO, exact same. All right. So close window. All right. So so you know your 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 basic closed window play, maybe a full zone outside zone type of play. All right. So run read check. Here we come. Close window. All right. I get a closed window. I'm I'm under keying the back. All right. I'm gonna mirror the path of the back inside out, and I'm gonna work cloudy to clear. All right. So nothing changes here on a guard run read closed window, nothing changes. Um, so working cloudy clear, if something opens up and I feel like I, I've got a path to the back to make a tackle for loss, I'm gonna take it, I'm a linebacker, that's what I'm paid to do, right? If it stays cloudy, then I'm gonna keep working over the top inside out, right? The same thing, nothing changes here. On the pull read, right? So a basic gap scheme play, all right? We get a pull. Once again, nothing changes with the reads for inside linebackers. We're running 4-2 defense, right? Under front, over front. We're, we're running 3-4 uh, uh, defense, 4-0-4 uh, or base look, right? We're, we're running the, the, a double eagle or a tight front. Doesn't matter, right? Same, same reads for our two inside linebackers, right? So we're going to gap scheme here to the will side, right? Initially... Right, and then it depends on how they want to block it. But here's so we have the, the tackle's gonna gonna, gonna base uh, the four technique, the tackle over him, try to move him out, and they're gonna work an ace uh, ace block back to the Mike linebacker, try to kick out the jack that's walked off. All right, so initially our will has an open window read, guard blocked down. He's got an open window in the B gap. It's a, it's a run play. Here I come. Open window. Here I come. All right, but he gets a pull, pull, pull call from the Mike linebacker. As soon as he gets that pull call, he goes from downhill to get outside of that, of that defensive tackle out there in the C gap, right? Right. This is how we get an extra guy to the, to the, to the play, the play side, right? So our Mike, so he got the pull. So his guard pulls, he's yelling pull, pull, pull. Right, and he's fitting front side A gap out, cladding to clear, right? So if the A gap would be open, which it definitely should, it most likely wouldn't be here, right? There's no, the A gap's closed here by alignment. Um, so he's gonna end up out in the B gap. If the B gap were to show open, then he could take that. If he, if he feels like he's got a chance to make a tackle for loss, then go ahead and take that, take that open window. If it's cloudy, then he's gonna continue to work over the top. So those are those are inside linebacker reads. The only thing, the only thing that that can be a little bit different 
Um, and and I, I believe I cover this in the, in the drive. If you want to know more about this specifically, check out the drive. Uh, when I talk more specifically about inside zone is we can slow our, our will linebacker or the backside of the back, the linebacker away from the back, right? Generally the will on inside zone, right? When, when we play um, our, our double eagle, for our bare front, right? A lot of people call it tight front, right? We, we, we play our bare front. So four I, zero, four I, right? So when we play that front, uh, so we, we have, we have the, the B gap on each, either side taken by the four I, right? We have our two inside linebackers, right? For the A gaps, let's say, right? Cause the B gaps are taken and then we have the nose, right? So, so we have, you know, we have five guys for four gaps, right? Essentially. So, so we'll, 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 how we will play our nose um, is we play him uh, hard through the nose of the center, right? The reason why I play him hard through the nose of the, of the center is we don't care if he gets reached because we're playing him in the backside A gap anyways, right? So that's our plan. So um, if, it's, if it's some kind of a, a scheme where the center is singled up and we're playing our nose hard charging through the face of the center, that's probably advantage us. Right. If we're worth anything, it knows. Right. If it's if it's some kind of a zone combo, then, then we're fine with him getting reached. He should get reached in, in that in that scenario. Right. And so the inside linebacker, the inside linebacker to the back, he's going to be slow to go on the back. We will slow him down uh, because we don't need him. Right, so we've got we've got let's say the end in, in in a four eye in the B gap, right? The mic in the A gap. Our nose is going to play the backside A. The tackle four eye. He's got the backside B gap. So all four of those gaps are taken. That leaves us the Jack linebacker is is the quarterback player. So he's got the quarterback, right? And so our will is really an extra guy, and so we'll slow him down and have two on the quarterback, especially we'll do that a lot against, you know, if you're playing a zone read team, option team, and the quarterback's really good. You know, we could play the bare front. That gives us an extra guy on the quarterback. Um, or, you know, we, we could have him as an extra guy on the running back if we thought he was he was really, really good. You know, we, we could do it either way. But generally, that's something we'll do on a, on a, on a great quarterback in the zone stuff. So, Coach, let me, let me kind of summarize that for the viewers that can't see the screen. You've got your basically your two D tackles in your out front in four eyes inside shade of the tackle, and your backside the outside linebacker away from the back. He's got quarterback if the quarterback keeps it, and the inside linebacker who's away from the back he can slow play it since in theory he won't have any open windows because your nose guard's taking care of backside A and your D tackles taking care of backside B. You can slow play the inside linebacker, which coach is referring to as his will backer. You can slow play the inside linebacker away from the running back against inside zone teams. Correct. Okay, good. Coach, this has been awesome. And I, I, I took about a page of notes here. This is a, a, a quite a talk here. You know, again, um, coaches, if they, if, if they, if they want um, uh, to learn more or go deeper, uh, your contact information is on, on the Glazier Drive. Uh, you can get a hold of you. There's emails and stuff there. And um, on the Glazier Drive, obviously, you spend 12, 15, 18 hours going a lot deeper into this system. Um, Coach, how do they hear you speak this year? What, what cities are you speaking in? Uh, I'm going to be at, at Glazier, Cincinnati um, on Saturday and Sunday. Uh, Glazier Pittsburgh for for all three days Friday Friday Saturday Sunday and then I'll be in Glazier Seattle on the west coast uh, for for all three days that weekend as well awesome awesome and then coach if they're in the drive obviously they can see the videos uh, don't you have some uh, forums where they could ask questions and I think you get notified and then are you doing some weekly webinars um, with Glazier now now that the season's over yeah yeah there, there is there is the forum uh, on the Glazer Drive, where you can get on and ask questions, uh, you can also shoot me an email. Um, you know, I, I, I may not get back to you right away, but but I, I always, you always end up with some open time somewhere. And 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 I, I, 
you know, it helps me develop too to be able to engage in a conversation uh, with another high school coach and, and talk about what we do. It, it, it always, uh, it, you know, that, that, that's good practice for us too. And, um, you know, I enjoy engaging those conversations. Um, and then, uh, you know, like you said, probably the, the best way uh, to do it is, is to get on the, uh, the Glazier uh, Zoom calls. What do, you, what do you, all access, man. The, the webinars, the webinars. The webinars, that are on the thanks. <laughs> yeah. thanks, Coach. Yeah, the Glazer webinars. Um, and and, and, and uh, I do those in, in the preseason and, and last spring. I, I, it was once a week. Um, and, and, and we had some great discussions, you know, 12, 15 coaches on there sometimes. Um, in the, in the season, it, it, it slowed down a little bit. We did it every, every, once every couple of weeks and, you know, everybody's doing their thing and, and game prepping. And I imagine now that, that we're heading into the off season and clinic season, uh, that we're going to ramp those up against so, us. So stay tuned on Glaciers. They announced, uh, uh, when we'll be doing those. Yeah. Coaches, I, I, I know for a fact, um, that coach is scheduled. Uh, he probably hasn't got the text message yet, but coach is scheduled to do weekly webinars now in the drive. And if you're a subscriber to the Glazer Drive, you automatically get an email about usually a day before announcing, hey, coach is going to be on the on the live on the live webinar. And of course, like anything, if you miss the live webinar, they're recorded. They've got a library of all the recorded webinars where you can uh, get deeper into coaches uh, fusion defense. Um, coach, you got anything else to wrap up uh, before I, I give a couple of announcements? That was a really good talk on on basically run reads and fits. Yeah, I, you know, appreciate you having having me on. You know, it's, it's an honor, and like I said, it's an honor to be a head coach at Maslin, and, and and I don't take that lightly. And we want to represent everything we do really, really well, and um, look forward to having great discussions uh, with all the high school coaches out there about uh, three, four, four two defense. Awesome, awesome. So, hey, coaches, uh, we will get coaches' presentation and put them in the show notes. You can uh, download the PowerPoint to kind of look at when you're um, watching or listening or, or watching. Um, so, again, this was brought to you by Team Nation. If this was your first time listening to our podcast, make sure you subscribe to the podcast as we will be doing three of these every week. They're always free, as are the downloads. Every Monday, we will interview a coach or partner from the Glacier Drive family like we did coach. And Thursdays, I'll interview coaches from the All Access coaching family. And on Sunday nights, it's just me rambling about program building, wing team, 425 defense, and strength training. These podcasts and the downloads that go with them are always free. You can find them at Stitcher, Spotify, iTunes, and everywhere else podcasts are found. There are also tons of free PowerPoints, PDFs, and webinars at both the Glacier Drive and my website, allaccesscoaching.com. Make sure you follow us, follow me on the Coach Rick Stewart Twitter handle. I've got a Coach Rick Stewart Facebook page, as well as we have our All Access Coaching YouTube channel where we upload three videos a week. This video presentation will be on both the Glacier Drive, the All Access Coaching website. It'll be on the All Access Coaching YouTube channel, and it'll be on the Glacier Drive YouTube channel. So there's going to be lots of places to find free content because, again, it's about coaches helping coaches and us giving back to this great game. I'm sure Coach will agree. All of us, I don't care how long we've been coaching, I'm in my 32nd year, um, you never stop learning. You never stop learning. And the great thing about the coaching community is coaches are always willing willing to share and, and help out and, and kind of pay it forward. So, again, Coach, awesome. It was awesome getting to know you and, and seeing all this. And uh, we'll kind of wrap this up. Appreciate everything. Thank you.